Immunoglobulin A nephropathy is a kidney disease which is characterized by deposition of an antibody known as immunoglobulin A in the glomeruli of the kidneys. This deposition results in a local inflammation of the glomeruli, therefore damaging this basement membrane. Immunoglobulin A is an antibody responsible for maintaining body's immunity, and in IgA nephropathy, this antibody is lodged in the glomeruli causing inflammation known as glomerulonephritis and with time this leads to disturbance of the normal functioning of the kidney in the filtration by destroying the membrane. This allows leakage of components such as blood and proteins which normally don't get out of the body. The causes is unknown, but several mechanisms have been linked with the IgA nephropathy, including overproduction of cytokines stimulating the messenger cell proliferation, increased IgA1 production, defective IgA1 glycosylation causing a decreased binding to the messenger cells, and decreased IgA clearance to give the defective mucosal immune system. Also, familial genetic factors liver disease such as cirrhosis, celiac disease which is triggered by eating gluten, and dermatitis hepatiformis with infections such as HIV and AIDS have been linked with this IgA nephropathy. In the part of physiology, it all starts from increased circulating levels of glucose deficiency immunoglobulin A1 because of genetic predisposition, mistrafficking of B cells from the mucosa to the systemic sites, and this one leads to an increased production of anti-IgA1 antibodies because this genetic predisposition of HLA haplotype, molecular mimicry, viral infection, and food antigens. All this lead to an immune complex formation in the circulation and immune complexes in situ. When these immune complexes go to the kidney, they, are, they cause a local and immune activation and injury of the mesangium. This can occur because of complement activation, cytokine or chemokine release, matrix production, mesangial proliferation, glomerulosclerosis, and interstitial fibrosis, of which at the end lead to kidney injury. The clinical features of IgA nephropathy and the most common manifestation are persistent or recurrent macroscopic hematuria or microscopic asymptomatic hematuria with mild proteinuria. Coca-Cola colored urine in these patients, edema of the hands and feet, and also high blood pressure is present. Other symptoms are usually not prominent, and gross immaturity usually begins one to two days after fibroid and mucosal illness, such as upper respiratory tract infection, therefore mimicking acute post-infectious glomerulonephritis. But in this case, the onset of immaturity is earlier. This rapidly progressing glomerulonephropathy in some of the patients. In diagnosis, we use the clinical findings which are the gross immaturity, particularly within two days of febrile mucosal illness, all with flank pain. Incidentally noted findings on urinalysis, and when conducting urinalysis, it shows microscopic immaturity with dysmorphic red blood cells and red blood cell casts. Also, mild proteinuria less than 1 gram per day can be present. Renal biopsy shows granular deposition of IgA and complement C3 on immunofluorescence staining in an expanded mesangium with foci of segmental proliferative or necrotizing lesions. Complement concentrations are usually normal, and plasma IgA concentration may be elevated in some patients. However, Persistent immaturity invariably leads to hypertension, protein and renal insufficiency. The risk factors for this progressive deterioration of the renal function are proteinuria more than 500 mg in 24 hours for over 6 months, elevated creatinine levels, uncontrolled hypertension, microscopic immaturity for more than 6 months, and extensive fibrotic changes in the glomerulus or interstitium, crescents of biopsy. The treatment in normotensive patients with intact renal function are not treated, but 
Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin 2 receptor blockers can be used for hypertension, elevated creatine on more than 1.2 mg per deciliter, or a unique protein more than 1 gram per day. Corticosteroids and immunosuppressants can be used for progressive diseases, and transplantation of the kidneys can be considered. Patients with renal insufficiency or more severe proteinuria and maturia are usually offered treatment, which ideally should be started before the significant renal insufficiency develops in these patients. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.